Like the, the teachers there, she can just buy the school. <laughs> you know? Of course, the people are starting to toss the ball a lot higher. Usually you're taught to hit it right at the peak. Gigi got the high volley at the end and really did a lot with it. Hit it with more authority, more pace. Gigi, you see, moving over, moving in, always trying to be aggressive. Boom. Puts that one away. Okay, you see some great shot making in doubles. And they're, they're, they're really the norm, not the exception. I mean, you see so many of them. Gigi with a great get, the ball clearly behind her, got around it. But that last shot by Savchenko Nealon was so instinctive, you asked me that before. She was hitting it about a foot or two away from the net. She just knew to move in. A lot of times, baseliners, when they play doubles, they just don't feel that comfortable moving around at the net. But it's something that you can work on, can learn and improve. And that really tells a lot about Gigi's style. She can make absolutely brilliant shots, and then on an apparently easy overhead, easy looking, she puts it wide. You're exactly right. In the 1990 U.S. Open with Martina Navratilova. One of two U.S. Open doubles titles. With Robin White. So 30 all. Gigi looking for a different ball. You want to get the one that's, I guess you would call it the skinniest. You don't want that felt all puffed up because you want it to go through the air as fast as it can. You want those skinny light balls. Thirty now. We expected this match to be close to service breaks thus far. But we are on serve at two all and deuce. So it's going to be who can be the most consistent and the most aggressive at the same time. Making those first volleys, making the other players play as much as they can and make the shot. A little late on that return. Trying to hit the off angle on the backhand side. It's a very tough shot to hit. Different play here. Vereva right in the middle, challenging them. Oh! Gigi likes to do that a lot. She did that with Mary Jo during the Olympics. Make your partners or make your opponents guess where you're going to run. Deuce. And back we go to Deuce. I think Gigi sort of caught no man's land there, right at her feet. Now, what, what goes on during the conferences? Well, right now, it's amazing, but uh, they're complaining about that second serve. They thought that second serve was long, and I actually thought it was long as well, but heck, they won the point. Why not move on? I guess they want to make their point. Advantage to the bottom. Good, low return. Didn't hit it with a lot of pace, but it was the placement that was so important. And that backhand slice, she kept the racket head out in front. So this is where Gigi wants to get a deep second serve in. She's moving over, you see, trying to get that angle, trying to get it to Novotna's backhand. 
hit you. Because last time when she served through her forehand, she just about got handcuffed while it was right down at her feet. So Gigi saves the break point. Back we go to Deuce. Barova right in the middle again. Advantage and another break. See Savchenko, Ignavatna on. Say, come on, let's go. She had a pretty good volley there. Big punch. Second break opportunity now. Five games, three service breaks. Hey, I'm Vane. This many break points, you would think that it was about time for set point. And another break opportunity. Again, Novotna moving forward, aggressive. They, they just make it look so easy, Bill. I know playing doubles, it's not that easy. They always seem to be in the right place at the right time. Anticipation is so good. Back we go to Deuce. little conference here, taking a little extra time. It's important for them to try to hold this serve. They're going to try the Australian formation again. That looked like it was going to be a little longer than it was. It was just barely out. Now, I would think in that crouch position that uh, it, it would be tough you have to get up and then react uh, well she doesn't want to stand up because she's getting in the head i want to wait <laughs> so the it's ball a better field. choice <laughs> i'll tell you that point fernandez, and game Braver. was one on nice adjustment there by gg fernandez as they say two fernandez, great points Braver, five four, four in the first the National Tennis Center, Flushing Meadows, Corona Park, on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. 30 30 love. Love. Women's doubles final, Yana Novotna, Larissa Sevchenko, Nealon, Gigi Fernandez, and Natalia Zareva. Just wide. So Gigi needing to come up with a big return here. They have to break to stay in this set. Peter Moore on the left. Gigi Fernandez's coach. And on his left, Julie Anthony, a former tour player. Sports psychologist. Really helped Gigi so much on the mental side. Helped her to calm down, become more focused, more disciplined. Gigi is a, is a tremendous player, great ability, but she also can be extremely volatile at times. Five all. Umpire asks for everyone to get their seats. Yana Novotna is serving to try to send this to tie break. to apologize the shot love 15 is there an ideal game for doubles 
into a serve and volley type? Oh, definitely. Definitely. An ideal game would be the serve and volley type with the great return, because in doubles, the serve and the return are just so key, so important. Martina Navratilova is always so impressive because she was number one in doubles as well as in singles. Long. Of course, Arancha Sanchez Vicario ranked number two in doubles in the world. Number five in singles. That's, that's very good. And she plays singles, doubles, and mixed. She plays a lot of tennis. With the Grand Slam. That time the overhead goes into the net. You don't see that really all that often anymore among the top players. Certainly McEnroe did it while you mentioned Martina. And Stefan Edberg. Stefan Edberg was number one in the world in doubles in 1986. And of course, last year he was number one all but 12 weeks. 12 weeks before Becker was number one. 30 kind of interesting. Today, apparently, if Pete Sampras wins, he can take over the number one ranking. If Stefan Edberg wins, he can take that over. Courier also had an opportunity to retain number one, but the winner of the men's final today will be the number one player in the world, so there will be a new number one in any event. That time, GG can't quite get there. Now that was the poach there, the poach when you go from your side of the court trying to take over your partners. But because you're at the net, you have an advantage, you can put the ball away easier, play more aggressive up there. go to Deuce, and we should mention that uh, Pete Sampras, I don't know if you remember this, Tracy, but at the end of the match, when they went to the net to shake hands, Courier said, what's wrong? And Pete suffering from dehydration. The sun was very intense yesterday here at the National Tennis Center, but we're told he's all right and should be fine for the final today. talking about other players playing doubles as well as singles. The only players ever to be number one in both, Martina Navratilova and John McEnroe. At the same time. At the same time, time right. <laughs> well, we're going to a tie break at six all. I guess there wouldn't be any other score to go to it. Very close match. Things have settled in after all the service breaks early. And Gigi Fernandez will serve. was looking like she was going to poach, then at the last second held up. Shevchenko couldn't adjust quick enough. <laughs> that time, the partner was waiting for it. Right at the net. So close to the net. Some of these points have been so tough. It must be great to get a, something served up like that. 
Two one. Zareva now to serve. And that time from the baseline, the Botna sends it back to the net. Zareva doesn't try to go for the big pace on her first serve. She's just kicking it in, trying to get in close to the net and get in as quick as she can. That's effective. That first volley, she was about three feet inside the service line. Whereas a lot of times the other players are right on the service line, so they're getting shots right down low at their feet. Of course, the tiebreak format, first to seven, win by a margin of two. Change sides. We have a rare backhand air. That's her bread and butter right there. Tried, for, tried to dip it down too low. This is early in the day, final Sunday of the Open. Those stands will be filled. People still coming in. Early stages of this match. And of course, the men's final. Later today, scheduled for a start at 4 o'clock Eastern Time. Oh. <laughs> Get your attention. A little bit late. Well, she goes for that backhand angle. That one was a little late the other day in, her, in their semi-final match. Uh, <laughs> Natalia Zvareva hit Gigi right in the back. Gigi had a little drama, fell down on the ground. <laughs> A long conversation now. Novotnin Savchenko Neeland. Choosing to stay in the back. Gigi like that. Yeah, she gets, <laughs> she gets into it. There are the tiebreak records. Novotna Savchenko Neelan, nine and two. Yeah. I tell you, for intensity, I think Gigi is going to will this tiebreak. Five oh, body. Jammed her. Again, that placement is so important. Of course, Rava is put pressure on him. Double fault. That is the third double fault. Gives them two set points. So Zareva and Fernandez win the first set 7-6 back to the open on USA in a moment in the Wimbledon final earlier this summer Fernandez and Zareva winning first set was close 6-4 but the second set 6-1 15. Three points away. Why? 
really this would be the game to do it. Larissa Savchenko Neeland has struggled with her serve throughout the match. Gigi with the volley right in the middle and the low five. 15-30 now. Yana Novotna, ranked number 11 in the world in singles. Number one in the world in doubles. No chance there. 15-40. Double match point. Gigi Fernandez and the Tyres are the 1992 U.S. Open Women's Doubles Champions. Three Grand Slam doubles titles for those two, those two in 1992. Back to the Open in a moment. the lifetime the 92 u.s open home video the memories are too good to see only once order now to receive the 92 u.s open home video at a special pre-release price just call 1-800-428-9921 straight sets the women's doubles championship here on usa and now let's go down on the court to tracy austin tracy thanks bill ladies and gentlemen Give him a big round of applause for this great double final. And now to present the runner-up, the, the prize money check is Charles Phillips, president of Maxwell House Coffee Company. Thank you, Tracy. It gives me great pleasure on behalf of Kraft General Foods USA to present the finalist check to Larissa and Yana in the sum of $92,000. Um, I just would like to take this opportunity to congratulate, of course, Gigi and uh, Natalia for uh, winning the title. I've been coming here for many years. This is my third final. I didn't make it again, but uh, uh, I'd just like to say thanks to my coach, thanks to my friends, and of course the family Covell for uh, great support throughout the years. And uh, I'd like to thank to Larissa for playing. And I just want to let you know that we love to play here and we'll be back next year. Thanks. And on behalf of Capio Ice Cappuccino, I'd like to present the finalist check, the winner's check, to Gigi and Natalia in the sum of $184,000. Um, first of all, I'd, I'd like to um, congratulate Larissa and Jan on, make, on making the finals. Um, it's the women's doubles is getting very even, and um, you know any team can win on any given week. And I think today was a great final. Uh, I'll also like to like um, my partner Natasha for playing with me, and our our supporters on the box back there also Kraft for sponsoring um, the women's tour all year round. And this is weird because there's a delay on the <laughs> when you speak. It takes about three seconds for it to come out. So. It's kind of weird, but anyway, thanks for coming out. We appreciate your support, and I hope to see you next year. Uh, thanks, Gigi, for a um, great partnership. Um, thanks. Uh, I'd like to uh, congratulate Larissa and Gigi. Sorry, Larissa and Yana to uh, make it to the finals. Um, I think it's been a, a kind of a nervous match, but. I'm very glad we got through, all right? <laughs> and uh, I'd like to thank my coach, um, our supporters in the box, 
uh, Kraft General Foods is sponsoring the tour, and everybody that um, came out here and watched a great doubles match. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. And now to present the championship trophy, Bob Cookson, President of the United States Tennis Association and Chairman of the U.S. Open. Thank you, Trace, very much. And I want to thank all of you for coming out during this U.S. Open. And I think we had a great one. And certainly we have two great doubles champions. And it's my pleasure, on behalf of the United States Tennis Association, to award the 1992 U.S. Women's Doubles Championship to Fernandez and Zareva. U.S. Open Doubles Championship. She and her partner, Natalia Zareva, winners at the French in doubles at Wimbledon. And now, having a good time with the Champions Cup here on the stadium court at the U.S. Open. And, of course, throughout the two weeks of the Open, much has been said about Arthur Ashe, and certainly the concern and support you've seen everywhere from the pins that we've been wearing in the booth to the ribbons worn by all of the lines people here today at the National Tennis Center. And since the announcement that he was injected with the AIDS virus, Arthur Ashe's life has been well documented by the news media. His Safe Passage Foundation for Kids, his drive to raise $5 million for AIDS research, just some of his current projects. But we decided to talk to some of his close friends to find out what this great man has meant to so many. Seated players, top seated players make it straight through. That didn't happen this year. Might we be seeing a little bit of a change at the top? I think it's wonderful. I think it shows that there's a lot of depth in women's tennis. There were seven unseated players in the round of 16, and Monica was the only one in the semis that was seated in the top four. But then, that's where it stops. Monica Seles is just so dominant. Well, what about Monica Seles? She seems to be playing, as Martina was in her prime, a level just way above everybody else. Yeah, everybody thought Monica was a little bit vulnerable coming into this tournament, losing the last three finals that she played, but she showed that she's not vulnerable at all, losing only 20 games the whole tournament. She's won six of the last seven Grand Slam that she's played. She did not play Wimbledon last year, lost in the finals to Steffi Graf in, the, in Wimbledon this year, so she's just been totally dominant the last two years. What are some of the pitfalls that she has to watch out for now? Because it has come apparently easy. I mean, it looks easy to those of us on the outside. Well, Monica is so intense there, so I think the only thing that can really hurt her is not keeping that intensity. And for right now, I mean, yesterday in her match, she was so intense, so focused. When she lost those match points, she just, she just bared down, got back into it, and just took control. We had a lot of fun this year. It and was it wasn't great. it wasn't hot either. We enjoyed that up here as well. We'll be back with more of the 1992 US Open on USA. People still coming into the stadium. Back in a moment. The of the 1992 US Open is brought to you by the people at Nike who encourage you to just do it. By SureView Daily Wear contact lenses. Imagine fresh new lenses every two weeks. And by Range Rover, the ultimate luxury car from Land Rover. In the distance, just adjacent to the National Tennis Center, the Unisphere. From the 1964 World's Fair, the centerpiece of Flushing Meadows Corona Park. And there you see the outside courts, court 16. A couple of great upsets out there this year. Looking back on the U.S. Open 1992 marathon, probably the word that everybody will remember. Stefan Edberg, it seemed like every time we turned around, he'd been playing for four hours and was in the fifth set. Some terrific moments at the 1992 U.S. Open on USA. Coming up next on the East Coast, 
MacGyver on the West Coast All-American Wrestling. For all of us at USA Network, thanks for being with us so long from US Open 92.